Kateki lelaku bau kuriti, ama kuriti ya leloroku lelalaki ya kuriti. Ya siriu lariu pieri riato. Ya bau kuriti ya riu kuriti ya riya kariu. Riu kuriti. Verse 9, for this cause we also since the day we heard do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy unto the Lord being unto the Lord, all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God that you would be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the father who hath made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins thank you father god daddy i thank you I thank you for releasing your word now. I thank you that the hearts, just as the soil, is all ready to plant your word in each and every one of us in the precious name of Jesus. And also for the, for the, the youth group, for the super kids, for the nursery, for the little ones, I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Do you agree? Yes. Well, let's be seated. Was this the best day of the rest of your life? Yes. This is the best day of the rest of my life. Every day you say that. Hmm? Great things. I've got them up in my sun visor. I've got little notes hanging all over. I like to do that. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to follow up a little bit from on Sunday. Okay? Um, what happens when you put God first place in your life? That's a question that, that long time ago I got when I was seeking first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be given on to you, studying that out and understanding that trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. All the Lord and shun evil. What does it bring? Health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Okay, when you start putting the, the word together, it really makes sense, doesn't it? The, the word makes sense. And all of a sudden, you yield yourself. You say, Lord, I just give myself to you. And before you know it, you'll be starting to do things. And like I said, you'll be translated places. And you'll see, uh, I've been here before. You'll go someplace and you'll say, I feel like I've been here before. But in the natural, you haven't. But in the spirit, you have. This will happen to you. It is a guarantee. Now that you know it, you start looking for it. Do you ever have a dream? You see a person's face, and within days you see that person? I, you know what? I was just thinking about you the other day. What is God doing? He's linking you together to release something, or they're going to release something into you. Isn't that awesome? God is good. So what happens when you put God first place in your life? What really happens? Well, let's go on to that, and let's look at this, the New Century version of Hebrews 11.6. We're going to go a little bit deeper. We'll only go as far as you pull it out through me. Without faith, no one can please God. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he is, a re that he is real and that he rewards those who truly want to find him. Now, remember, he rewards us. He is a rewarder. And so when you put him top priority, he'll put you top priority. When you put him top priority, he'll put you top priority. It's a promise. Do unto others you want done unto you, right? So God rewards us. When we run after him and we thank him for his goodness and we thank him for what he's done in our lives and start thanking him for, for the little things, for the big things, we don't thank him that, that we get a disease. We thank him that we're healed. We don't thank him that we go broke. We thank him that we're rich. That's what takes us out of that sorry state. So thank God every day, like I said, and through the day, tell him, you are a good God, you're a faithful God. Do you ever look at the, the, at the clouds and you watch the clouds? You know what I, I, what I like to do is watch the clothes because did you ever, well, no, <laughs> I like to do watercolors. I don't do them anymore. 
But when I did watercolors, I'd look at the clouds and I would try to capture it. And you know, Warren got this far and you go back, you moved it, God! But if you take a picture of it, you can stand it still and tell you. God will give you a picture in the unseen. And you'll go, boy, that's far out. But then he'll start fulfilling that picture for you because he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now you're here tonight and you're diligently seeking. You get a reward. What is the reward? You wait, you watch, you will see. So does he reward us like like, uh, Joel was saying on Sunday, Joel Olsen, does he reward you for coming even tonight? Do you believe that? You mean he rewards me just because I'm here? Does he reward you like you girls on Thursday morning? Does he reward you when you come on Sunday morning? Oh, I could have laid around. I could have every Sunday morning. No. No. But is he going to reward me? Mm Mm-hmm. So that's why I said to him, you know, when my, my brother was here from Virginia, is that okay, Lord, that I don't come on Sunday, that Mark do it? He said, yes. But did I get it before? Did I listen to it all before? You see... He's not, he's not going to punish us because we're not doing what we think is perfect. Because he looks at your heart. He did not look at David, what was David doing. He looked at David's heart and what was David constantly doing? Seeking after God. How did he do that? By the words that he spoke. How else did he do that? By the music he sang. Right now, and we were talking a little bit about that, and I, <laughs> that's crazy because I wrote that down. When you look at the, the, the Psalms, what did he do? And a long time ago, I was teaching on that. He started complaining, Oh God, this is going wrong, that's going wrong. We can do that with God, can't we? But then, what did he do on the end of that Psalm? He spoke the way he wanted to be. I know, God, you've got this all taken. I know it's covered. I know. Isn't that what he did? Look at the Psalms and see what he did, and then do what he did. So, um, God wants, he's, you know, he's actually running us down. He's chasing after you. If he says in his word he's chasing after you, he's chasing after you. Did you ever have a dog get away? A kid get away and you start chasing him? He's chasing us. Why? Because he's so much in love with us. But he also owns you. He owns you. If somebody owned you on this earth, you wouldn't feel good. But when you start looking at God owning you like God owned Jesus, and Jesus became a slave, a bondservant to his father, as an example, he wants us to be a bond slave to the father so that we can get those great rewards. But when you do that, you don't feel like you're captured. You don't feel like, oh, I'm just getting used. No, when you get used by God, you feel really good when you're used by God. So God's always rewarding us, even when we do wrong things. Why? Because that's why Jesus died on the cross. He knew we were going to mess up. But he's chasing after us because he wants us to turn around and look at him and run into his arms. Well, you don't have to turn very far because, man, he's right there. So... Um, he's, he's waiting for us to release his word. What is his word? What do you say to him in the morning? Oh, I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you for this morning. Thank you. It's so beautiful outside, and it's raining, and it's hailing, and snowing. No, thank you. Just thank him. But if there's something coming at your, at your house like a tornado, you, thank you that I have the authority to curse that thing and to stop it in Jesus' name. Right? Yes. Yes. So um, the only catch is, the only catch with it, he demands that we run after him. What am I saying? He's saying, when you've got problems, don't run away from me, run to me. How many people do that? How many people do that? I, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. Once I knew Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, when I had a situation, I ran more to church than I did before. But you see people staying away from church and, and, or, or away from God. Or, well, I haven't prayed this one. Oh, this is a while ago. This woman had all kinds of problems. And I said, 
you pray in the Spirit. She said, no, I just gave that up too. He wasn't doing this. And That's the only hope you have. I don't, I don't care. What a miserable life she's still having, and it's years and years and years later. She's punishing God because he didn't do what she wanted him to do, which was off the wall. It's what we think, what we think. So now he said in Matthew 6.33, the New Century Version, he said, seek first the kingdom of God and all of these things. Now, oh, this is what I, seek first God's kingdom and what God wants. What does God want for you? Just think about that. He wants you healthy. He wants you wealthy. He wants you at peace. He wants you to have joy. What does God want you to have? He wants all your children. He wants more than you even. He wants your kids to be obedient. He wants us to teach our children to be obedient. Why? Be so they can get the blessings. If we let our kids run like holy tares, do you think they're going to f- do that when they get older? Absolutely. But God says, train them up in the ways they go so I can bless them. That's what he's begging us to do. So he says, Seek first God's kingdom and what God wants. Then all your other needs will be met as well. I was sitting there yesterday, and, or was that early? Yeah, yesterday morning. And I was thinking, Lord, I, I just have to sit here and praise you. You'll tell me when to move. You'll tell me. Yep. And just like you're sitting there, like... I remember when we were in a Lutheran one time, I and another couple of other gals, we sat down in this little hut out on the beach there, you know, nobody else around, just sitting there with our feet up. We didn't have to do a thing. Just sat there. And we started talking and just sitting there. I can still remember it. See, God wants you to sit and wait for him to tell you when to move, what to say, and what to, what to do. He, that That's what he's... Instead, we have to... We have to Fill, did you ever have that? I used to have that. Fill your calendar up. Got to have something going all the time. Got to stick this in there, stick that in. It gets you snaky after a while. Because when do you relax the body so that you can listen to him? So remember, he will pay you. He will pay you just for looking to him. Just praising him. Wasn't that a sweet word, though? But it says, if you start looking up the words in just Hebrews 11, 6, and Matthew 6, 33, you'll see what, what um, Joel Olstein was saying. He's looking to reward us. He's not look, looking to take things away from it. He says, I'm looking to reward. So the other day I said, you know, Lord, why, why sometimes aren't we rewarded? He says, because, how did that go? He says, people ask for things, but they never did the thing I told them to do here, so I can't move them on because they've never done this here. It's like if you go on a trip to Florida, if you don't go the correct way, you're going to go out and around. You may get lost. You, may, you know what I mean? But you can get back on the path, right? So think on that. If you get off the path and didn't do what he told you to do, Keith Moore had talked about that a long time ago, what happens? We get off the path, and you'll stand still, and you, then you stop, and you'll go, Lord, what, what did I do? What did I do that I'm standing still? And this little thing will pop up in your mind sometimes, and you'll go, oh, you're right. But Lord, I'm still not ready to do that. Just think of the Israelites going around the mountain. They just kept on going, and they died all but Joshua and Caleb and their children of the people who just didn't want to give in to God. See, we're different. We're different. We just give it over to the Lord and we thank you, Lord. Remember, cast your care. So you, like I said before, you get a reward just for coming to church. You get a reward just for getting up in the morning and say, I love you, Jesus. You get a reward from him. He's always wanted... See, if you can get that in your mind, he's always looking for ways to reward you. He's always looking for ways to give you good things. Did you, girls, do you ever go shopping? And you're at that cash register, and they keep on giving you more money off. Then the other day, this girl on Monday, and I said, oh, oh, yeah, she's, 
I have a coupon just for you. Six dollars and some cents for a forty-three dollar top. Are you kidding me? No. Why did God want to reward me? Because I'm an ambassador. You're an ambassador to Christ. He wants to reward you. He wants to show himself to you. He wants you to be lifted up. He wants you to have confidence in him working through you. And you will burst loose and you'll do things you wouldn't believe you'd ever do before. So now, um, we pray every day. We let the Lord, we, let, we bring honor to the Lord and he says, I'll bring honor to you. When you're, when you're seeking him, Lord, use me. Did you ever do that? Lord, use me. Did you ever just throw that out you? out there, and all of a sudden he's using you, and they think, Lord, I don't like this. No, no, you gave him the authority to do that, right? When you say, Lord, use me, you gave him the authority, but I'll tell you this here, it won't be a cumbersome thing. You'll love doing it. You'll love doing it. The wonderful thing about it is you'll be growing during that time. That's the awesome thing about God. You're going from glory to glory. You're always growing in it. That's the way I feel myself. I'm always growing. Like, like I'll find a little nugget, you know, and I'm just higher than a kite. I just can't help myself. So God will take, you know, he, he, he will give you things you never thought you were going to do. He'll do things you never thought. Now, how many of you, I got that picture of Oral Roberts on my refrigerator. I've got it in my car. I got it all over. I got it out of my screen here. The, who ever thought Wisconsin, these little people, would sit at Oral Roberts' table, eat his food, just him and us and Sonny? His, who ever thought? And he says, go through my house. Take pictures of anything. I didn't ask, but he did. What, what, what is that? He, he not only invites us, make sure we get picked up and taken back, but what happened? The, the, the cab driver was trying to mess with us and make, make us pay more. Well, Sonny, she came out there and she said to the guy, noom, 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 and he, she took care of him. <laughs> Somehow they knew they, he was going to dupe us. Why did he set us at Oral Roberts' feet? Why did he, why were we eating Oral Roberts' food? I could never imagine doing that. And so when people said to us, you know, when we went to, to Copeland's, it, what did you do? Nothing. We just sent an offering in like you send people, you know, and write a note and say, I hope to meet you sometime, you know, fit. get a letter back a month and a half later. Could you even imagine sitting at the guy who had the faith to build Oral Roberts University in his house. You've got him all to yourself. He gives you his book that isn't even out yet, and he signs it. Can you only imagine that? See, that's God is a rewarder to you and to me when we seek him. When we look at ways to give our time, our money, I was saying in the prayer room, did you ever go to the bank and get cash? Two, three, four, five hundred dollars cash. Get fives, tens, and twenties. And say, Lord, show me who I can give this to. You'll get so hooked, just like I used to be on alcohol. You'll get such a high and you won't get a hangover. That's what Jesus did. He was always looking to give. And so do unto others you want done unto us. Do you see it? Oh, he's a good God. So does God notice our efforts? Absolutely. Do we have to know the word inside out? No. Can we be healed just by loving on him and singing his songs? Absolutely. So there are rewards coming to us. So here's the key. If you don't realize that God is a rewarder, then you won't expect goodness. So you have to realize that he's a rewarder. And what did it say in that scripture there? It says in Hebrews 11, 6, in the New Century Version, he said, without faith, no one can please God. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he is real. 
isn't it? Do you believe he's real? Yes. Yep. And that he rewards those who truly want to find him. I did something today out of the box I've never done before. And the Lord told me what to do. I was telling the girls in the prayer room. And I just did what he told me to do. Surprised me even. You know, when you stand up, and you give your name, and all of a sudden stuff is coming out about the Lord, you go, and just let it roll. He rewards me for that. He rewards me for that. And I'll give that testimony not too long. So what is our attitude? Our attitude should be, I expect the goodness of God. I expect because I'm here. I expect because I pay tithes and often. I expect because I give a hallelujah handshake. I expect because when I was at the store, this person really treated me like dirt and I treated him really good. This person turns around and um, I'm going to give Dee Dee's testimony. I'm going to do it. She's, she's back helping in the back. One of their trucks came into, I think it was New London, come into New London and they had a swerve because there was a car there. Is that true, a car? And, and so you got that big truck. You got a big semi-truck. It had a swerve, right? And it dumped some of the steel off of it. Well, her boys came home, Matt and Drew. I think she's making a big difference in those kids' life. Because she's like, don't speak like that. But she didn't have to do that. They came in. And what did, what did Drew say? Couldn't have fallen in a better place. It was a good place where it fell. And then Matt. What did Matt say? Come on, girls, you were there. They didn't speak enough, but they also demand, she pointed and she said, you put a demand that we get recompense and reward for that. Yeah, devil, you just don't want to get a woman mad. You, you guys all know, you get a woman mad, you got hell to pay. Is that right, guys? Come on, fess up. Good. Otherwise, I'll talk to your wives. But, now, could they, they didn't get angry, they weren't, you know, blah, blah, blah. Couldn't have fell in a better place. But now they're going to get recompense of reward because they acknowledged God. And they put it, and Matt, as he went away, he's demanding now, like his mother says, we're getting recompense for this. That's what we got to do, isn't it? That, when he says pray continuously, God means that when something happens that you don't like, you turn it around with your words. Don't mess with the devil. Don't take his nonsense. Okay, um, when, when we obey God by saying what he tells us to say, you will be a victorious person in every situation. Sometimes you just got to sit and give yourself a minute, right? Don't let the devil take you out, you take him out. Remember, God owns you. Could the devil take out Jesus when Jesus walked this earth? Did he have plenty of opportunity? Was he going to throw him off the cliff? What was he going to do? Until Jesus was ready to lay down his life, he couldn't touch him. The devil cannot touch you, but just think, you don't have to go through what Jesus went through. He went through it, so we're free. We're free. Don't you mess with me, devil. This is a freight train coming, Ooh. and it's going to cut you up. And, and when you take the word of God and you get that kind of attitude, no devil in hell is going to be able to pull the wool over your eyes. So he says, and remember the word. He said, the word seek is a strong word. It means to require vital necessity. It's a vital necessity to seek after his word because you don't know what situation is going to come up in your house. You, you don't know. Who knows tomorrow what you're going to find out? I didn't know this was going to happen with my body on May 16th. I didn't know that. Did I know May 17th <clears throat> when they called? You get this, I didn't even know anything was wrong. I thought I was good to go. I was just doing that because in six years I haven't, I just blah, blah. But I listened to the Holy Spirit, did what he told me, 
And the devil cannot hold you down. Because once you get this word in you, knowing that God owns you, you know that. You speak the word, and God will take over, and he'll trash the devil. He'll trash him and move him out of there. The devil, you don't belong to the devil. Unless you give your voice to him. How do we give our voice to him? How do you give your voice to him? What is one of the highest ways that we can give our voice to the devil? Think about this. What is the highest form of prayer? Praise. 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 Okay? If I start singing some songs from some groups, what have I done? I have just stopped God because now I've taken another God and put it in place of my God. Right? So did you ever get one of those catchy songs that you heard when you were uh, in the world? And it comes back and you're just, and all of a sudden you go, oh, dear, oh. What was that, Lord, again? Oh, that was it. You just turn yourself over to the devil. But then you turn around and see, he raised me up. Or you say, my resurrected God has resurrected me. And you turn that around and you just trash the devil. Oh, God loves that. He loves it when we trash the devil. So what does God say to us in Psalm 1611? He says, you will teach me how to live a holy life. Hmm. Being with you will fill me with joy. Who's speaking this? David. At your right hand, I will find pleasure forever. What are we supposed to do? Invest our life. How many of you guys want great success? How many of you want that when you speak the word that you need something done, it is done like that? How many of you want that? Amen. That's why you watch what you say. You watch. See, Lucifer was the head of music. Did you ever really study that out? What kept music going? It kept the world in orbit. It keep, kept the trees. It keeps everything. That's why the animals have music, and it goes through the earth, right? Elephants, dun, dun, dun. it's music. The whales in the sea, right? Music is the highest. Who, what did Lucifer do? He took out another god. The highest form of prayer is praise. And God said, mm-mm. So now God says, now, my children are going to be lifted up. I've got the animals singing. But now my children are going to sing. Right? What are you singing? What are you saying? Oh, I'm just a poor old drunk. I just, oh, you know, I'm just, I'm just a lousy person. Start singing yourself a melody. Who, who did you join? Who is your God now? And then we expect good things to happen. But you know what? If my kids came when they were younger and they'd come home and they'd start bragging about the neighbor lady cooking and all that good stuff, you know how I'd feel? How would you feel? Go over there then. Get, get, get. You, wanna, you know what? Get over there. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't that be an insult to you if they always bragged about the neighbor lady or the, what they're doing right and you're doing wrong? Ooh. I opened the door and I said, get out one time to Kim. Go, just go. Kenny Jr., leave. That, I don't really bother you. Tracy, go ahead. That don't bother me. Some of you will fight tooth and nail to keep your kids in the house. Let me in there for a while. I'll help you straighten them out. Straighten them out, not square them away. So Proverbs 3, 6 again says, Remember the Lord in all you do, and he will give you success. King James in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Uh, you know what? Um, when you look at, um, uh, you know, when you hear karaoke and stuff like that, did you ever hear that song, Bill Bailey, Won't You Come Home? What are the words of that song? Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't you come home? What else does, what, what, what does she say? I'll do the cooking. I'll pay the rent. Is that a woman's job? That's a man's job. If a woman wants to work and con you know, put that into the pot and household, that's absolutely all right. But what does that song really say? 
You start singing it, and you'll become that. Do you see it? We know it, don't we? We know it. I know like, like country western, I remember this guy, we used to, with dad, remember that, Kenny, I don't know the name of the place, we'd go with him up there as before we were Christians, and he would sing about, about cheating and stuff like that. He was on his third marriage. Do you think it got into him? Yeah, and then he was, the one he was with, he was having problems. I'm like, wow, he's a man whore. <laughs> I mean, what else do you call him? He goes and he sings, and before you know it, there's another little hussy there, and he just... <laughs> no, that wasn't... This, this, you never heard of this guy. His first name was... I'll call him Tony. But that wasn't his name, but I remember now. But he just thought he was the coolest thing that ever lived. At, really, that place up in Shano. And, and just... When I looked at him, I thought, you are disgusting. I... That was my husband. I didn't need to, you know? You know what I'm saying. But what that can do to you, it can pull you away. The same thing when you start thinking, I can't do that, I can't do this. It'll pull you away from what God really has for you. Proverbs 22, 4 says in the Living Bible, True humility and respect for the Lord led a man to riches, honor, and long life. What is humility? When I humble myself, I submit. Humble means to totally submit. Totally submit. You know, let's say somebody wants you to submit and you don't want to submit, right? And they tie you up. You saw these old Westerners and they tie them up to it. They're totally submitted, right? Or put your hands up, you're totally submitted. Do you like it? No. I don't like that. I don't like anybody holding me back. Right? Never like that. But he says, he says, acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. I'm not forcing you. I'm giving you free will. I'm giving you a choice to do it. Choose this day whom you're going to say. We can choose. We can, I, can, I can choose to walk out there and I, give me a hammer. Give me a hammer. I'm going to go out and puncture your tire and your tire and your tire. What do you think you're going to do about that? You're going to come out and try to restrain me. Right? Don't call the cops. Well, yeah, you're going to call the cops because a nut is on the loose. See, that's what happened is we let the nut, the devil, lead and guide us. <laughs> don't, don't do your car. <laughs> It'd be fun to try. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want it done unto me. So uh, Proverbs 22, 4 it says, it says, True humility, true submission, and respect for the Lord lead a man to riches, honor, and long life. Um, do you want... A long life? Absolutely. So he says here in Galatians 5.19, he says in there, he says on the end of that, he says, well, I'll, start, I'll read the one here, the new living. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, don't tell me you don't have that too because I got that too. I'm always trying to straighten it out. Isn't this the biggest battle some days, Pat? Just telling your flesh to shut up. Don't you, you folks have that battle? Yeah. Oh, thank you. But sinful nature. The results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures. Just the thought sometimes. I want to choke that person's neck off. They make me so mad. That's really a lustful thought. I mean, you're thinking about something else, but idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish, selfish ambitions, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, this is what, what Paul is telling the Galatians, let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of a life will not inherit the kingdom of God. He is saying here, you are born again. The Galatians were born again. He's speaking to the born again Christian. He's saying the kingdom of heaven is here. Didn't, isn't that what Jesus was the kingdom in? And he released to us everything we have need of. Is that true? Yes. So he said, now here's the kingdom of God. Now the only one way you're not going to have the kingdom of God is if you worship other gods instead of me. <gasps> wow, that's pretty different, huh? We see actors and actresses and singers out there for the world, and they're hitting the bottom. It's horrible, you think? Can we control them? No. 
but we got to look at ourselves and we can pray for them. So Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is the one who trusts in Adonai, who trusts that he is your master and he owns you. And he will protect you. He will provide for you. He'll direct you. He's your master. He loves you. Is it easy to serve somebody like that that you know is never going to hurt you, never going to do anything wrong? Is it easy to serve? And he's never going to get mad even when you mess up? Doesn't that feel good? He's just waiting for me and he loves me. So Jesus became that bond servant. So it's beautiful when you th think, what did he do for me? What did he do for me? What did he do for you? I want some testimonies. What has he done for you? Today I say, this is the best day of the rest of my life. That means today, tomorrow I'll say the same thing. Well, I'm, I'm going to give this testimony. I had to ask Kenny what I said when I stood up, but because I, I, I was in the spirit. We had my class reunion at 11 o'clock this morning. Pastor Kenny said, the reason we had it during the day is because we're getting older, and so we... <laughs> 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 So anyway, there was, what, 30, 40, what, 40 people there? Yep, the, the, the husbands and their spouses, 30, 40 uh, people there. Our class, you know, that we went to school with, and he knows a lot of them, and I know a lot of them. And the Lord said, when you get up, they ask them to introduce themselves, to tell who they are, where they work, the do jobs they had from school on, give their kids his name and what their kids are doing today and their grandkids are doing today, and I'm thinking... I don't know what they're doing today, <laughs> but working and you know what I mean? And it's not wrong because they wanted to brag on their kids. N that's no problem. I took all my grandkids' picture along, and I took Earl and Kim's picture along, and I took Tracy and Kyle's, and I took, you know, Kenny Jr. I was just, I was, I was, I was, was that called bragging? Yeah! And I took big pictures. I did the little stuff, you know. Why not? It's my day. They said you could do that, you know. And, and, where am I at? I just got... <laughs> um, take me back. Where was I at? Take me back. Oh, okay. So here, I, here they're, they're giving all of this here, you know, and, they're, and, they're, and I'm like, oh, boy, I don't need all that information. I don't care. You got 15 grandkids, and they all do this and this, and three of them are in school, and them. it was too much information. But that's what they were asking for, apparently. Okay. So the Lord said to me, you know, you, you'll be all right. You asked me to give you wisdom, you know, before you came and, stuff, and to use you. Okay, yeah, we got a deal going. And so the Lord says to me, I want you to stand up. Okay, so when it came my turn, I stood up and I said, I am Janet Romanesco Fredrickson, and my husband is Ken Fredrickson, and they were kibitzing him because his name was Smiley. They wanted to know how he got that again because they all know him there. Well, as I'm standing up, I, all of a sudden I'm talking about the kids and blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, I started witnessing to them. The Holy Spirit took over. I told them, I said, you know, when I was in high school, I said I was quite a drinker. And I was an alcoholic, and I had uh, people in my family that died of alcoholism. Is that not right? died of alcoholism, and I said, the day that I went to a, a, a friend of mine took me to the Christian women's, and she introduced us to Jesus, and I asked Jesus into my heart. I couldn't drink anymore, I couldn't smoke anywhere more, and I continued to give my testimony, didn't I? When I ended, some people started to applaud. They weren't applauding me, they were applauding Jesus Christ. But I said other things in there, it was just awesome. Then, one person, you know, the minute I stood up, then, then you had to go. And he turned up and he said, Janet, I am so proud of you. Even Jerry and some of the guy that was speaking, he said, boy, that was really good that you did it. Yeah, but it was Jesus who did it. Do you understand that? I, I know who did it. I can't do that. I can't. So this young man that was sitting behind me, that we saw when we were going tonight, we know him well. I started giving my testimony about my body. And Kenny was there, you were there at first for that. 
And you know what he says? He's just like, How can you be healed? How can you be, what are you? Healed. He said, that's the F, not, not you know, they say, they say frickin'. That's a swear word. You know that, don't you? If your kids do it, tell them to knock it off. That's, that's the form of the F word. And he said that, and I was like, I ain't going to correct him. He said, that's a mm, miracle. And his eyes were, and he started asking questions. He just couldn't get over that. He couldn't get over that. And I said, you know, Tom, that's all you have to do is ask Jesus into your heart. Oh, wow. He, he was stunned, and we talked a little bit. So then we finished, and we're going out. People started coming for me. One of the gals that came was my best friend, one of the best friends in high school. And she stood there, and she comes to me. You weren't there, you were... She comes... Would you pray for me? Here I started laying hands on people. Prayed over her. Tomorrow she starts chemo. She's in a bad way. God brought me to give her my testimony so she would have hope. Did you get that? He brought, he's a user. He's a user. And he knew that I would be used. By that time, my other friend from high school came and one of the others, and we're standing around her, and I'm giving her my testimony because, you know, she had just heard that I asked Jesus into my heart. But she didn't hear the testimony of of my healing. And I started, and she's just standing. And the other ones joined. I didn't care who was there. We were having a good time. And I finally said, and I, I had checked in my purse to see if I had the anointing oil. I don't bring, I mean, I don't think about that. And I did. I had my little tube of anointing oil. And the Lord said, go into your purse and get that anointing oil out. And I said, would you like to pray now? Yes. And I said, just a minute, I have the anointing oil. And I said, yes, I carry, because now I get to lay hands on you, and you shall be healed. She was so ready. I said, come on, girls, we're all going to touch her. Are they Christians? I don't care. I prayed over her, and I prayed scripture. And when we were through, she was just like, and she goes, how do you know all those scriptures? She's, she's standing there. And I said, I should know them. I'm a pastor, you know. And she's, yeah, I know, but you see, same age as me, all these years, what do we do with the word? Now, we can't look down our noses at her because we were the same way, right, Mary? So I ain't going to look down at her. Mm-mm. We're not going to do that to anybody. But before you know it, one after the other started listening. So she, and the Lord said, remember, you've got that in your purse, the pictures from the test. You have that in your purse? Yes, I do. I went in there, and it's just her and I, just a friend and I, because the other one's, We're doing something. And I said, I want to show you this. But the Lord said, she's got to see that. What it looked like. And now that it's all gone. She said, that just, that just, I need that. And I took out the paper. No breast cancer. Theater care. And she saw it. She's just like, I said, that is my God. And I said, you know, God said, my people in Hosea 4, 6 are uh, destroyed for lack of knowledge. But how do you know this stuff? I said, because I have been spending time in the word of God. I've been teaching it. I've been studying. And that's what we all should do. So when something comes along, it doesn't broadside us. But no, no. I said, 2,000 years ago, he hung on that cross so you'd be healed right now. Then the friends were back again, and I, st- I continued to give more scripture. I said, the devil, don't ever say God did this to you, because it was not God, it was the devil, because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God was on the move. I tell you, God was on the move. He was on the move. Like the other girl, she come over me, and they just hugged and hugged and hugged. Isn't that amazing? God turned a class reunion into a prayer service. I told him he could use me. 
But it wasn't until we got home I said, Kenny, what did I all say again? <laughs> because it's God. That's what God's going to use all of us for. You know what? I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what anybody thinks. You get to the point, Mary, we just don't care, do we? We just don't care what people think. It's what he thinks. Do you see that? It's all about him, and when we seek him, he's a rewarder of persons. And I said, God, that was the best reward I could have my whole life. I thought it was seeing Oral Robertson going to his home, but praying at my class reunion for one of my very best friends and another one standing there and having this one and that one and giving the salvation message. And then I said about, you know, you three girls, this is how you ask Jesus into your heart. <laughs> Well, I didn't know there was a few listening behind, too. God, I'm not ashamed of you, and he's not ashamed of me. Get ready, folks, because it's coming. But God's got to set the stage for this. He'll set the stage, and he'll say, stand up, or he'll tell you to do something. And you're just going to flow like a river. You understand that, don't you? Okay, who has a testimony? Oh, where's that nice mic that you can hear really good? Kenny's got it. But now you've got to put that right up here. De Debbie, get after her if she need to. No, we want to hear them, you know. It just went off. He was off. Oops. It's on red. Is it off or did he lose battery? There it's on. He was off for different kidneys. One, yeah. one person. Yeah. Hold on. Just, just <laughs> Let me take a break. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that better? No. Nope. Better on? It says, oh, there, okay. Um, one kidney, the recipient had had, had staph. Another one had lung compromise. I mean, he's had different offers, but they were always bad. And after three years, he's finally number one on the list. And of course, we, we prayed about this, and um, I told her that God's got it in his hands. He's going to take care of it. He has not had water for over three years. He has not urinated for over three years. He said, the very first thing I'm going to do is drink water. He's allowed to have a fourth of a cup of water a day. Fluids, that's it, because his kidneys don't work. Every other day, he's going for dialysis. We got a call at 1 o'clock today. He got a kidney. Oh. He was in the operating room. Oh. She doesn't know who the recipient is. She just has a feeling it could be the hurricane. So somebody was blessed. You know, they were blessed and somebody blessed them. But what a miracle, because we watched him be brown. We watched him be healthy looking, up and down, up and down. He's a wonderful man. It was nice for us to be able to tell them mm -hmm. what God's doing for them. It gave them hope. Wow. Amen. And to be a part of that testimony. Yeah. See, we can pray for... We have the hope that it's going to happen. Yes, yes, yes. But he felt like it never would happen. And he just, it's just, you know, this waiting is so hard. Yeah. Imagine three years. It's probably been over three years, but three years he's been bad. Yes. He's been bad. Wow. You know, remember this thing. You can pray for people, but if they don't believe and receive, it's not going to do diddly squat. The woman with the issue of blood. Hmm? The woman that was bent over like a paper clip. They had to receive. They had to receive. Okay? The sincerian, sincerian soldier had to receive for that child. But if, you know, when, when, when you pray over somebody, you lay hands on somebody, if they don't receive, it's not your fault. It's 
because they didn't receive. But then once you get prayed over, you continue, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I instructed this girl what to do, by the stripes of Jesus. And she says, well, should I do this and this and this? And I said, what does your husband think? And I turned to him. I'm not going to make those decisions. That's not my decision. That's got to be their decision. Do you get it? But you pray over people. They have to receive and pull that out. You can't make them do it. Okay? Who else has a testimony? Come on up, Aaron. So for the last um, probably two years, we've been doing most of Appleton Area School District's sound systems, football fields. And uh, <clears throat> we just finished something up at Appleton West. They got a brand new field. And the athletic director called me, and I was just there. And he's like, something isn't working. Could you come out? And I'm like, I don't want to because I know it's probably something simple, and I don't want to drive out. But they're very big clients, and they're, they're nice people to work with. So I went out there, and the Holy Spirit was preparing me for something because I'm like, what? how could they mess it up? We make it almost, almost foolproof. We oh. turn a key. Everything turns on. You can't mess it up. So I'm like, I don't know what you could possibly. So I went there, and he met me up in the press box, and I said, well, show me what's happening. So he turned the key. Everything came up. I said, well, you have your mic muted, you know, because we have a button on there for the announcer. He has to push it to talk, so because they like to wear headsets, they don't want to hold a mic, so they can announce, and just when they don't want to, when they want to talk, they push the button. So he was like, okay, well, I feel really silly, or he said stupid, but I said, that's not a problem. And uh, mm. the Holy Spirit said, ask him about his kids. So I'm like, your kids? But I, I know the guy, I've got some, somewhat of a personal relationship, and he, he said, tell him, um, and this was tough because it's like he's, he's pretty high up there and you don't want to upset somebody. But he said, uh, tell him, ask him, where are you failing as a father? I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not something you tell somebody. No. <laughs> and he's a good guy. So I said, well, how, I first asked, how are your kids? So that's what I said. And I said, so where do you think you're failing as a father? So I'm thinking, where did that come from? I, he was silent. <laughs> he was silent. And I said, let me tell you where I think sometimes I fail as a father. I said, I think it's uh, quality time with the kids. Like, I'm there, but you're checked out. And yeah. He, uh, he agreed. Because athletic directors, I don't know if you know, they're gone a lot. Because they got to go to every sporting event. And uh, he said, yeah, I was... Uh, oh, I see. He said... Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have kind of a problem with that, and you know, some of my kids are you know, kind of tailing off and not wanting some time with me anymore because, you know, I'm not paying attention enough. And I said, you know, well, what's more important, this job or your kids? Wow. So, wow. That's awesome. Oh. Wow. Wow. That'll that'll get your heart. <laughs> Did you just hear how God used and spoke through him? Did you, isn't, you have changed that man's life. And those kids were maybe crying out for help. Yeah. Open your mouth and God will fill it. I'm proud of your kid. Eric. Okay, um, I'm working at a nuclear power plant. And in the past, I probably all know I've done some stupid things in my life but when you go to a nuclear power plant you have to spill your guts 100% on the table nothing left mm. and many years ago the first time I went I thought you know what I'm just gonna have to see if I can get through here and I ended up having to meet with this guy from the FBI his name was Don Pop and the guy is 120 pounds dripping wet little you know little guy and he has these glasses and he threw me through a loop. I, I'm very rarely intimidated by anyone, but this guy just looked through me and he just, I remembered his name and it was probably seven, eight years ago. And I just remember 
I don't, I don't like what this guy stands for because he had total control over me. <sighs> so I've been at this nuke for like eight days and I'm not able to get in. And I was sitting in this room and I was doing paperwork and I was helping people and doing a bunch of copies and stuff. And I prayed about it and I said, I, okay, I think I know what it is. I, I bet you it's my background and I think someone's been messing with me. So I go, I had to do this rad worker training thing today. You have to dress out in case you have to go in the containment. I come out and the guy goes, there you are. He goes, you need to go meet with Don Pop. <laughs> My heart raced. Oh my so, goodness, no. Thinking, don't screw this up. And Pastor Jan's expression, you know, do you need someone to jerk the slack out of you? I called Kim, because I know she always answers her phone. And I just said, I need some help here. Kim jerked the slack out of me. <laughs> I went in and I owned that guy. It was... I'm like, you don't have to be intimidated. This guy's just a little guy. I, and I remember him looking at me, and I thought, that doesn't intimidate me. And it turned out the reason that I was denied is because there were several credit card applications with um, my information, my address, with some uh, typographical errors, you know, wrong middle name, my last name is S-E-N, not S-O-N. And I said, Don, I know what that is. And then he's just looking at me with those little eyes. Of little the, eyes. Like, I, I own this guy right now. So I told him what happened. I, I just you know, said, I know who's doing this. And that, that's not me. You know, if you want to look at my credit, that's fine. You know, I actually had a picture because I just took, it took my credit ratings. Um, and when I was all said and done, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna prove that I own this guy. I said, Don, next time I come here, I don't wanna to have to face this again. I would like you to print up what you have on me. So that way next time, you know, going to a nuke, it's a lot of paperwork. It's several yeah. hours of paperwork. And uh, I worked for about 20 contractors over the last three years. So I have to put down, hey, I work from, from you know, March 3rd through March 30th, and then I need to document where I've been from the 31st to, you know, it's, it's just a lot of paperwork, and I'm, I'm fairly organized, but he looked at me like, okay, and he went back, and he printed out what I needed, and then at the bottom, he, he, it took him 30 seconds, I bet, and on the bottom, he wrote some notes real quick, obviously he's a fast typer, and he cleared me of any future things along the line of this credit report and then along the lines of some stupid things I did in the past, which he was questioning me about as well. But it was, Kim jerked the slack out of me. Who is Kim? Kim Schmall. Kim. Because she... You better look know, out. That, I'm sorry, I didn't make that... Did you know that? I'm sorry. Oh, Kim Small jerked the slack out of me. No, you didn't. But I just, the reason I called her, I th she will answer the phone. Hey, just look at Facebook. Yeah. She wouldn't answer the, wait, wait. oh, me? She will answer the phone. If, if I was somewhere and I needed to contact someone, I would call Kim because she's very good for answering the phone. Yeah. So I quickly texted her, piece of cake. You know, I, you know, but she would, you know, quickly responded, so that's why I contacted her. So she jerked the slack out of you? Absolutely. How I did she do petrified. that again? I want to hear that. I was petrified. I'm, I'm thinking, what, I'm thinking what, what could have I possibly done? I haven't even gotten a parking ticket in 10 years. And uh, I went in there. Don Pop was putty. <laughs> Woohoo! We're training that girl up right. So I just wanted to testify to um, how the things are going back in the school. The last yes. Week. Um, these kids, and so the, we're using the ACE curriculum, which is Accelerated Christian Education, and, and I ha don't have a homeschooling history, so I don't know one curriculum from the next and what makes them all different and what makes them special, but I can speak to the one we're using because I have experience with it. And um, from what I understand, the ACE curriculum is set apart because of the character training that's built into it. Their, yes. their core 
uh, like uh, foundational beliefs is integrating the character training into the and memorization of the Bible, which in the beginning I wasn't so fond of. I was thinking this is overkill. Why do I have to memorize all this, all these verses all the time? But now I'm starting to get a picture of why that's so important. So um, I'm just going to read an excerpt of one of. This came out of Jaden's pace. She's out of her Bible pace right now. She's in Matthew chapters five and six. And so um, last night we were reading her her scripture piece at home because here they have to read it in the King James Version, which is very hard to understand. So at home we'll read it in the new the NIV so she can actually understand what it's mm-hmm, saying. Mm-hmm. But her passage was about adultery and divorce and fornication and she's like, I have no idea what that means and so I had to break it. I was thinking, is this really appropriate for a third grade level? Like why are they having her start here? But I think they were just starting in the gospel, so they just start in Matthew and work their way through. So I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to have to explain this to you the best I can with what that all means and why it's bad and whatever. And um, um, so we got to this part that was talking about prayer. And um, this is this, the portion of scripture. It says, and also when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray publicly, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, so that they may be seen by men. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, they already have the reward in full. But when you pray, go into your most private room, Close the door and pray to your father, which is capitalized, who is in secret, and your father, which is capitalized, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. So do not be like them, praying as they do, for your father, capitalized, knows what you need before you ask him, capitalized. Pray then in this way, our Father who art in heaven, (laughs) listen to me, I go back to the Methodist, okay. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors, letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for yours, capitalized, is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. And so um, our discussion after this that section of scripture, she was trying to understand what uh, vain repetitious prayer meant. She didn't understand it. So I was giving her what popped into my mind. I was like, Holy Spirit, how do I explain this to her? Help me. And he brought to my mind the rosary that she had around her neck from Grammarita, their family is Catholic. So I just explained to her, you know that beaded necklace that you see at Mimi's house with the cross hanging on it? Well, what that means is all those little beads on that necklace are like um, a a count. It's like a counting method. If they were to do something wrong, I just gave an example of telling a lie. So in the Catholic Church, to the best of my understanding, Mm -hmm. if you were to do something that's considered a sin, like lying, then you have to go to your pastor, which in the Catholic Church is called a priest, and they call him father, and you have to go to him and you have to confess that I lied, and I repented that lie, and then the, the that pastor, just so she understood what a priest was, I just called it a pastor, would give you a certain number of prayers that you had to pray. So this Mm -hmm. section of scripture we just read, the Our Father, you have to say that so many times, and each time you touch a bead, you have to say that over again. And then they have another one that has to do with hailing Mary, which I don't know the words to, but I said, you could ask Pastor Jan, I think she remembers. I got it. (laughs) You wanted to know that one. So you go through, and the, and the pastor or priest will give you, you have to say 10 Hail Marys and 10 Our Fathers, and then you're forgiven of that sin, of lying. And so I said to her, what is that? Tell me what you think about that, I think is what I said. Huh. And I said, well, Mom, that's wrong, because this scripture just said that, that, that you're not supposed to repeat prayers over and over. You're just supposed to ask God, and that's why the F is capitalized, because it's talking about Father in heaven, not Father on the earth. So why would you go to a pastor to repent of a sin? You're supposed to do that to, to God the Father, that's why it's capitalized, and then that's it, because that's why he died on the cross. So, like, I'm just thinking, I'm just listening to her explain this to me, and I'm thinking, this is so profound, her knowledge and understanding of this scripture at eight years old. I mean, yes. all these kids yes. back there, they are powerhouses. When Christine is teaching the devotional in the morning, and she's asking them, you know, who was the son of Abraham, and who was the, what were, what were they, you know, what, why was that significant, and what was Abraham believing for, and what did the stars represent? Yeah. These kids are calling out these answers. Amen. And I'm just like, yeah. so this is funny. So Jane is preaching to me, it's explaining the scripture and how she believes that the Catholics are doing it wrong, and that you're not supposed to go confessing to a priest, and, and how you're not supposed to repeat prayers like that doesn't make any sense. 
So today we're driving over to Target and we pass the Holy Spirit Church. And she points out the window and she says, Mom, I want to go in there right now and talk to that father, <laughs> that priest in there, and tell them <laughs> what I read. <laughs> Mom, pull over. I want to go in there. And I said, okay, so let me tell you about another scripture in the Bible. This scripture, I'm, I'm going to teach you some wisdom now, James. It's good to have knowledge, but you also have to have wisdom so you know when to use the knowledge you have. And I said, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, cast not your, your pearls before the swine. And I said, do you know what a swine is? No. So explain to her it's, it's a pig. And do you know how expensive real per pearls are, Jaden? If you put a pearl in front of a pig, will a pig understand the value of that pearl and know that it's something that's expensive and that they could, you know, it's valuable? And she said, well, no, I'll we'll probably try to eat it. Exactly. So I just tried to explain to her, you can't just go around. You may, there are going to be many situations in your life where you're going to hear things that are incorrect according to what the Bible says. But not in, not in every situation will you be free to give that answer. That's why you have to listen to the Holy Spirit, and he will tell you when to open your mouth and when to hold on to it. And I said, so that's what it means not to cast your pearls before the swine. It means you have very valuable answers and information, and I know it hurts sometimes that you want people to know the truth and you want to help them. But if they're not in a position to receive it or understand it, then sometimes it'll do more harm than good. Yes. So you can't just bust up into that church and go find the, the priest and tell him to preach of what you know. Unless the Holy Spirit is directing you to do that. So. Whoa! <laughs> oh, Allie and Aaron, I think you've got a power hose on your hands. <laughs> what are you going to do with that, Aaron, when she takes that to Grandpa and Grandma? <laughs> Life goes on. Does anybody else have a testimony? Wow, these were some dynamite, weren't they? God is good. All the time. Really? Yes. Is he a user? Yes. Do you like to be used? Yes. Absolutely, because you, you just get high. But these were excellent testimonies. I mean, well, you know what I like? I like, you know, here, Aaron, what did you do? You, you, you spoke to that gentleman because God was leading you. Did it intimidate you at first? Probably. But you didn't quit. Eric, you didn't quit, but you knew somebody to call. You knew, you know what I mean? On the situation, the kids teaching. Look at this whole thing. We are doing what the Father has instructed us to do. But now you've got to expect the one who owns you to give you great recompense of reward. You've got, you expect him to give you a harvest. You expect him to take care of you. You expect him to protect you. You expect it. You'll get, you'll get pretty, that word cocky. You know, you're just like, you know, like <laughs> little Joey one day he's walking and he's like, I thought you're going to run into that Joey. That was, that was that one Wednesday nights or something a while ago and I'm thinking, Joey, you better look out. You're really, did he have a ticket or something that somebody else did? I'm not sure, but it was funny. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Snorting. <laughs> Just, I love to watch kids. I love to watch kids because they are so true and honest, aren't they? Okay, this is our opportunity. Um, Kenny, is that box? No, I didn't bring it. Remember on Sunday, I was showing you, I was showing you that, that when I took that wafer and I broke it in half and then I fit it back together, you can't tell where one stopped and one started because it really doesn't drop that many crumbs. Remember, that's what Jesus Christ did. You cannot see the difference between you and Jesus. God cannot see the difference between you and Jesus. And I'll say again, God doesn't want you to see the difference. That's why he took, broke it, and then when he rose from the grave, it was all together. We rose up out of the grave with him, and so we're one. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do, do you understand that? We're whole. God owns you. You're his. You, you, can choose. you don't have to be his bondservant. You don't have to be. A, Paul said, I choose to be a bondservant. I choose to be a slave. To me, I'm just like, I just, I like this. I like this. Because you always get rewarded through your children, through your home, through whatever. So,
take, take your offering. Take your offering, or if it's your tithe, take it and know that your tithe had opened the windows of heaven. Your offering, what did God tell you to give? It's not how much you give, it's what he told you to give. Because that is what rains down the 30, 60, or the 100 fold. If you're not getting what you want, seek God. Seek God. And if he says no, just hang on. Just hang It's It's coming. It's coming. Don't be so anxious. Okay. But if he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you say the right things over there? What did you do? Always go back to yourself and check. Check it out. We understand. So let's do that, do that at this time. Let's just give ourselves to him. But you expect a great recompense of it. Not 30, not 60, but get the hundredfold return. Do you understand that? Let's do it. Amen. And then we're going to take communion. We'll get it done. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Oh, now remember, remember, expect a harvest. If you don't get it, you get you you put a demand. Angels, you go get my harvest. You bring me my harvest now. See, the, the angels are your servant. Send them out to do what they're supposed to do. Jesus did that. Hmm? Paul did that. Now you do that too. Send them to do the work. You're not to do the work. Next time you'll say, Holy Spirit, show me what to do. Next time you'll say, huh, I got to bail that. Angels, you'll go to, you need somebody to come into order. You say, angels, you'll go get my kid and you bring my kid into order. You'll go get my grandkids and you bring them into order. That's what your angels, they're your servants. They never sit down. Got it? They never sit down. Correte, herria, correte. Now, as you break that wafer, remember, Jesus was broken. He was broken for us, and here we are back together with him. It's perfect. It's perfect. As you eat, expect full, full Come recompense a reward for every situation in your life. Expect it, guys, because he wants to lift you up as a trophy and brag on you. He wants the world to see you. Like today at my class reunion, God wanted him to be seen. Him to, I mean, they remember all the drinking I did in high school. Oh, my goodness sakes. Got in a little trouble one time. Was it after school or during school? Some of us were out in the car drinking a little brandy and stuff like that. You know? yeah. We got caught and we had to stay after school. That wasn't fun. And I know those people remember it. <laughs> I don't care. That's in the past. So now here we are made whole. We're made whole. Let's eat together. Eat everything. He said, chew it all. Eat everything that you want. Don't let the devil take you out. You take him out. Oh, yes, Lord. Hmm. When you're chewing that, think of everything you have need of. He'll give you the desires. You just think, nope, nope. I need my family saved. I need my family in order. I need my body in order. I need my finances in order. Tell him. Now, as we lift up his blood... I was sharing this, and it, it's a little complicated, but I'll share it, and you'll get it. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed that was before he went to the cross. Did the, did the blood run down onto the earth? Was that Old Testament? Was the earth sanctified for us? What is the earth? Is your body, what is your body made out of? Dirt. Right? Now, here's the New Testament, and on the cross... Did the blood, every drop of his blood, run out of his body onto the earth? Who did he do that for? He sanctified the earth, which is us, so wherever we tread our feet, it is holy, because he had the, his blood that ran out onto this earth and sanctified this for us. That's where everywhere that we go, it belongs to us. His blood ran out 
to sanctify. Old covenant, new covenant. But what did he give us in the new? The same thing that Jesus had. Righteousness. See, the disciples had the authority. Jesus gave them the authority before the cross. To how many? To 12. And they gave it to 100, or 78, and they gave it to 100 and so and so. Now it's all of us. We have the authority. Take it. Take it. Don't mess around. Take it. Now, Father, we thank you, and we're going to drink this because we have a covenant with you in Jesus' name. Blood was always shed as that symbol. And so when you're taking communion, you are remembering, I have a covenant, and I can put a demand on my covenant, and my covenant is all paid for already. Remember Joel Olstein was saying, if, if, you, if you lose a dog or something like that, or what do you do? You, you put up a reward thing. You've already got the money to pay for the reward, right? And if you return my dog, I'll give you 500 I wouldn't give you $500 even for a dog I love. Sorry, Dixie. <laughs> I just, I, I wouldn't do it. I'd say, keep the dog. <laughs> I'll give it to the church. <laughs> <laughs> but but that money is already in there. See, God has a reward for us. It's already in there. The only thing we have to do is take it. And, and when you get that in your mind, we know everything is going to be all right. You get, and say that to yourself. When things look wrong, just say, everything is going to be all right. No, everything is going to And you'll talk yourself into it, believing what the Word says. Would you stand? Father, we thank you so much, and we give you the glory. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that opportunity. I thank you, Father God, for every testimony here, that those testimonies will her verbiage, and it will continue to pulsate and pulsate, just like when you throw a stone in a real still water, all those little ripples. It will continue to go out and help other people. And I thank you, Father God, that you used me today at my class reunion. I thank you so much that that goes and goes and goes, and people are told about it, and people are healed. People are set free. People ask you into their heart. That's what it's all about, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Now, I plead the blood of Jesus over you. You're blessed going in. You're blessed going out. You're head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You are a bond servant, a slave to God, because you choose to be a slave. Got it? Amen. God bless you. We'll see you girls tomorrow.